Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn, and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand. Today's episode is another one in our series of animal tools. This time it's about a common marsh bird, the snipe. a little bit in the past about different molding profiles and we've seen a few molding planes and there are a lot more to come but along with the specific planes that we use to make specific moldings there are a couple of other planes that we can use if things don't go quite perfectly and the two that we're going to talk about today are called snipes this is a snipe bill basically because it looks a little bit like the marsh bird's beak and this is called a side snipe let's make a molding and then I'll show you how and why we might need either of these snipes planes here I'm gonna make just a regular uh, a regular bead here so keeping the plane upright and keeping the fence tight to the work pretty soon doesn't take too long and I will have made a nice little quirked bead. Now if you look closely, if I can get the camera to come close and look here, you'll notice that the end of the quirk, the quirk by the way is the name for the, the, the part that goes in, is not particularly smooth. So what are we gonna do about that? Well, there's a plane designed especially for that purpose. And here it is. It's called the side snipe, because unlike most other planes, not only is the iron vertical, but it doesn't cut at the bottom of the plane, rather it cuts on the side. So if I'd made a molding like this and I wanted to make the sides really sharp, I could use the side snipe to trim the side of the molding. These planes come handed, meaning you can get one going like I just used for left-handed work and you can get one that is good for right-handed work. If the grain of this piece of wood was going in the opposite direction, it might have been better to use this plane and use this way. So they thought of everything, left-handed and right-handed side snipes. The other thing that might not be perfect, and this is just a small six inch piece of wood, but imagine that I'm making a piece of molding for an entire door and it's six feet long. I want the entire molding to be perfect. The other thing that might go wrong is that the round part might not be perfect. So to trim that up, I use what's known as the snipes bill. And just like the side snipe, these also come handed. So you can see, if I use this one, this part, the thin boxed part, goes down in the groove, and the other side is nicely concave and will trim up the side of the bead. So, as I said, this is just a short piece of wood, but imagine I have a really long piece. This way, it will guarantee that I can make a perfect molding. And by the way, I'm just showing you how to use side snipes and snipe bills on a very simple uh, beaded piece of molding. But if you look at some of these other more complicated moldings, you can see this is like a reverse OG. I, I could use this the same way. This might also need trimming up. In fact, almost every molding that you make may at one time or another or one place or another need a little trimming. And side snipes with the blade that cuts at the side and snipe bills that have a nice concave, these are the planes that you need 
to make sure that your moldings are perfect. I want to mention one more thing. I constantly, when I'm talking about these old tools, talk about Stanley, who reinvented everything at the beginning of the 20th century in metal versions. And to this day, you can still get, I don't think it's quite as efficient, but you can still get a plane that would do that kind of thing. So over here, I have these come in pairs. Let me find one for the moment. But this will also do the same thing as a side snipe. You can get these, sometimes they're double with two blades, or sometimes you have a left one and you have a right one. They also, Stanley made an improvement by giving you a little depth stop. But essentially, it works the same way as the side snipe. I can put it in the wood like this, and that will also trim up the side of the molding really nicely. See how nice that comes off? This is something that if you're only making one of a kind pieces, I wouldn't dream of doing this if I was trying to make 500 chairs. But if you're making one of a kind pieces, this is one reason why the hand tools are often better than their modern successors. In this case, if I had all hundreds of feet to do, I'd use a router but you can never get quite the same finish with a router as you can with the wooden hand planes. So if you want to know more about snipes, snipe bills and side snipes, you can read all about them in one of the many books that I've written. This one is Woodworking Hand Tools, and here's the plane section. And you can see different kinds of snipe builds. These books are available from my website. You can just call me up. And if you want to learn more about other kinds of planes and the dovetail box that I've been promising you for a while, then don't forget to hit the subscribe button. And then after you've done that, hit the like button. And remember, as a lot of you are doing already, uh, I welcome your comments and I'll answer them all. And um, thank you for watching and hope you had a good time. Thank you. Mm -hmm.